What is mm-hmm. the sanctuary? Is this a, a, a new development of the sanctuary movement in churches here in New York? No, no, no. We have been around since 2007. And Riverside Church, which is a member of the sanctuary right now, was also a member of the sanctuary in the, in the, in the 80s. And the um, they, Riverside Church uh, offered sanctuary and had, a, had someone in sanctuary for two years in their building in the 1980s um, to stop the deportation of the Salvadorans to their war-torn country. In, in 2007, we, we revived it because we were hoping that with the inter, um, the inter, mm-hmm. the, um, the, 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 that, that faith leaders will, will make a difference in the immigration reform, um, uh, advocacy. And it was supposed to be maybe a short three, I mean, a year or so max. But since 2007, we're still going because not, things have gotten actually much worse and more terrifying. So you, you see in the moment, um, Parents are getting their power of attorneys ready, Joe. If something does happen to them, their children will not be taken away and put in foster care. Or so they can do they that. Know that someone is going to be. They, that? Can, they can do that. They can take parents away from their children, and they're planning to do that. Has that been happening? That has happened before. That has happened under the um, Obama administration. Millions of people were deported, and ch- children, were, children were left uh, alone. Uh, and children were left. And if they were not left alone, they, 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 the, the premise of the the government, whether it's um, this new one or the, the, you're right. I don't like to name them either, um, mm-hmm. but or the or the previous one, uh, they would say, "Well, take your kids with you, right?" And you know, if you're going to a war-torn country like or a, a violent country like Honduras, you don't. You rather <laughs> how can you do that? Um, and but how can you leave your children? So millions of kids have been mm-hmm. um, separated from their families. So do you expect that in the uh, if the Trump regime keeps doing, you know, building on what started during the Obama administration and adding a even a, a greater level of uh, urgency to their uh, by hiring more of these ICE agents? A lot of them are, I've been told, are not very well trained and just sending them out there often on on what they see as a political mission, not so much a law enforcement issue. issue. But uh, um, do you expect these churches basically to fill up with people, uh, and will the, the government respect these churches as sanctuaries? So we will, that's what we were worried about um, under the last administration. Uh, they this, they honor the, the sanctity of this, the church on a house of worship. It doesn't have to be a church, a Christian church, a synagogue, or a mosque, but would, could still offer sanctuary. And they honor that space, and they, would not, they had not entered into the space to arrest anyone. We were worried about that, but... Um, Recently, a week ago, uh, the the head of the Department of Homeland Security, General Flint, uh, General Kelly, issued a, a memo stating that he will honor the um, the separation between the church and the, the state, and will not ask his officers to um, to go into the sensitive locations like the church or the schools, or in, including demonstrations, to arrest and deport people. But and but you, again, you 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 mentioned it earlier where. Um, this is a civil pro- proceeding, right? So it's h- how how um, how can they go there in this way and destroy families um, in such a manner? You know, they go in there with force, they go in there, they arrest people, they take people away, they force people away. And this is a civil proceeding. This has nothing to do with security. This has nothing to do with safety. This is about getting rid of people who are who are brown skin, who are blacks, who are um, Latinos. Who are from Africa? Who are from the Caribbean? Who are from China? Um, and you know, it's and who are making less, probably less than minimum wage. But they, if they if they are not part of the fabric of the community, the community actually um, mm-hmm. uh, it collapses. I see. Well, what uh, what do you think is going to happen next, uh, as far as the sanctuary movement in your your case in particular? The sanctuary movement is going to get bigger. So um, we have had. You, you mentioned only one church, but we have had a, n- a number of churches who have come on board. We, you know, we had believed the count was 14 official churches, and we have had commitments from uh, dozens of them who said they want to be sanctuary churches. I just need to get an official um, signed commitment from them to to really publicize that they um, these are the churches who are going to open the doors for people who are afraid, people who are terrified. So. It is not just to open these doors, but to actually um, protect 
guide people through the process. And right. in one, it, even if you offer sanctuary, oh, there's only so much houses of worship that, that can hold the people. We need to um, train um, our immigrants, brothers and sisters who are undocumented, who have a green card, etc., that if they get caught up in the system, they don't have, they, they should not sign away their right to an immigration hearing. As a, it is a stipulated waiver or a 407, I'm not sure, but they, there is a document that says that they, they waive their right to a hearing. You, if anyone who is listening, please tell people do not sign that away because you need to go to court. You need to fight for, for your right to stay in this country, to stay with your family, to be with your family because you deserve that. You have worked hard. You have, you have, you have an integral part of the community. And we want to keep you here, but you have to defend yourself. And we will be there with supporting you as church leaders. So when you say sanctuary, we're not only talking about physical sanctuary, but we, um, what you saw today, we have we train people to accompany them, the immigrants, to their hearings, so that they are not alone, and it it it, it, um, mm-hmm. it affects how the process happens, so that people are treated with dignity and respect. Thank you, Ravi Riper. Uh, any information, uh, any any uh, contact information that people might uh, who might want to help and support you should know? Sure. They can go to the website, um, www.newsanctuaryNYC, N-E-W-S-A-N-C-T-U-A-R-Y-N-Y-C, dot all, or call the number 646-395-2925, 646-395-2925. And you will be seeing a number of trainings. Six, um, let me get that number. I just want to get that number straight. 646-395-2925? That's it. 646-395-2925. And if you know anyone who is undocumented, um, please tell them to contact us. We have a lot of trainings for them, a lot of documents, a lot of resources. But if you if you yourself want to volunteer and to participate, to so change and advocate for for a change in policy or advocate for someone, an individual, you make a big difference in their life when you accompany them, please reach out to us. We are always looking for volunteers. We need people to help those who are afraid and who are terrified. Thank you very much, Ravi Ragwar, for joining us on WBAI. And we'll have to say, we'll keep in touch and we'll follow this case, your case and, and the case.